Hi, my name is Mark Schubert. I am the owner and founder of Philip Harrison Interiors here based in Chicago, Illinois. I had a kind of a weird experience finding interior design. It started when I graduated during the recession in 2009, 2010. I was, I had a degree in digital marketing at the time when social media was, you know, just the new big thing. And I was interning at quite a few different companies over the course of a year or two. And I had a friend of mine who had her own event planning company focusing on corporate events, weddings, things like that. And at the time I just wrapped up an internship at a nonprofit where I did their yearly fundraiser, um, where I planned the entire event and really set the stage and designed the entire event for them. Um, I really enjoyed doing that. And when I was able to jump into that with my, my friend who owned the company, uh, it was really fun, but the part that I really disliked was the fact that at the end of the day or the night, everything got taken down and it didn't last. So a friend of mine, another friend said, well, why don't you look into, you know, interior design or exposition design or something like that. And, you know, within six months, I was at Harrington College of Design here in Chicago as a grad student, um, you know, doing what I honestly love to do now every day. Um, and within a couple of months after that, I get my first internship at an architecture firm here in Chicago. And then just five years later, I went on my own and started Phil Harrison Interiors. So it was kind of a, uh, a circular type process there. And uh, I now love what I do. In residential design, you're working one-on-one -on -one with a client, whether it be a couple, a single person, um, you know, whoever it may be, is a little bit more in tuned with what their wants and needs are versus a you know, board of directors of a hotel group that are pretty much more focused on the bottom dollar, the bottom line. How are we going to save money here? We don't want to spend that much money. Uh, you know, where can we cut out of the design? So your design gets, you know, pulled back a lot and isn't what you were expecting from the beginning. So I do prefer the residential design for that reason. Most of our clients that reach out to us, they reach out to us because they see our portfolio online and they see that we are not afraid of color or pattern, texture, material. We listen to our clients. You know, I think a big portion of being in any service industry is listening first and foremost and then executing. So we listen to our clients and we like to hear what their likes are, their dislikes, colors that they may not like to use or want to see. Um, you know, we have clients that have a large art collection and they want to incorporate these bright, bold colors, artworks into their home, you know, and that's just the starting point. So we do like to use color um, a lot. Um, I always used it as a kid, you know, color is my thing. Um, but uh, when it comes to how we use it, it's per project and how we want to develop the design. So when we use color in a space, we want to make sure that we are using it in a correct way. Um, whether we are creating an entire experience out of one color, whether it be blue or green or pink, and the entire room is some sort of different shades of those tones, or if we're strategically placing color throughout the room, or it's an open concept room, like a great room, how do we tie each space, let's say dining, living, and kitchen all together, but make them feel still separate yet cohesive? So we might take a backsplash tile and bring some of the color into the backsplash tile and that color is now into uh, a rug or a sofa or some chairs in the living room and the dining table and the chairs might have a little bit of that color and a pattern on the back of the, the chairs. You know, it's, it's strategically placed so that your eye wanders naturally, but it's not you know, an overabundance of, of that one color. My favorite type of project, honestly, is when we are able to work on a complete home from start to finish. So when we get brought on to a project where, let's say, it's a new build construction home or we're, you know, got renovating a, a home that is from, let's say, 1908 or something like that. Those are some of our favorite projects to work on because if we're brought in at the correct time, which, you know, we try to tell clients, bring us in at the beginning, it's going to help you a lot we like to take our time and again listen to our clients and see how we can provide the most beneficial opportunities to them 
in the design. So whether it's working with the builder and the architect on the floor plans and doing some spatial layouts with them to start with, or just the mood boards and concept boards, just to see how we want this all to flow and function together from space to space. Those are some of our favorites. I think the biggest thing that we're seeing is that merging between like a living dining and kitchen space all within a kitchen. So we're seeing a lot more kitchens these days that might add uh, banquette seating to the kitchen, but it looks more like a sofa or like a big sectional with a table in the middle that they can sit at so that they can relax and not be so proper and upright. So we are seeing a push towards uh, something like that in terms of design too. I think one of the biggest challenges that we're seeing across the spectrum is, and I don't want to put this all on like AI, but the 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 fast furniture, the fast design. Um, we see it all the time where clients come to us and they think we can get them an entire design in a week or so. And I'm like, well, that's just not how it really works. You know, everything takes time to develop. You know, we work with you hand in hand in this entire process. And the the fast furniture, the the Wayfair, the Bed Bath and Beyond, or the Overstock, or wherever you know, if you're looking at something like that, I don't think a designer is going to be the best asset for you at that time. You know, we can make it, you know, style it, make it look pretty, all that. But you know, we focus our efforts on you know lasting environments in the home. You know, things that you know you're going to buy a sofa, and you're not going to want to change the sofa for you know five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years. You know, you're 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 designing a space that is resemblance of you and your personality. And I think with the fast furniture, you know, a lot of it ends up in landfills. It's just not sustainable. Um, we like to use sustainable materials, recycled materials all the time. Um, and then with like AI, it it helps us in, in creating digital like renderings and spaces to help our clients visualize. But in that same regard, you know, clients can jump online and, you know, hire a, a, a company, you know, that will give them a rendering and a design within, you know, a couple days. But I don't think it's it's what most people are expecting when they hire an interior designer. So I think that's a big aspect of how we're seeing like a shift in the design community right now. I'm half first generation here in America. My mother was actually born in Italy and her and my grandparents and her older brother came here when she was just a kid um, and you know, they actually moved to Chicago from Italy. And it's something that you don't hear of every day today that, you know, there's someone is immigrated in that way, you know, um, you know, we still hear about immigration and things like that. But the fact that a lot of people wouldn't recognize that just by seeing and meeting me that I am half first generation here in America, that it's, it's kind of astonishing. And I do like you know, saying that because it kind of, I don't want to say throws people off, but it starts a conversation, which is also really nice in today's, you know, climate. <music>